Ferrari returns to Le Mans. For the first time since 1973, Ferrari will race for the overall win at the legendary 24 Hours of Le Mans. Ferrari will join the World Sports Car Championship's hypercar class starting in 2023 with a car called the Competizione GT. Ferrari has nine wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, but not a single one since 1965. Needless to say, this is huge motorsports news. Let's talk about it. Boy, slow news day, eh? So Ferrari, pretty much since 1973, has been exclusively focused on Formula One, at least from a factory perspective. So the fact that they are expanding into any series is a big deal. And certainly the 24 Hours of Le Mans, uh, that is one that Ferrari has a legendary history at. But not in recent times, unless you count, of course, the GT category. But going for overall, uh, Ferrari is uh, kind of long past the point where they were winning races. So man it's it's exciting certainly it's a good day to be a sports car fan but before we get into sports cars i do have to address the elephant in the room because otherwise there's gonna be a lot of comments saying i ignored the issue and that is indycar and the fact that ferrari made a whole lot of noise about joining indycar and seemingly this announcement uh, puts the final nail in the coffin of that happening for the foreseeable future and ultimately you have to ask yourself and i have the answer to it is what is more attractive about Le Mans racing uh, versus IndyCar racing? And I think the simple answer is technical freedom. We covered on this channel, Ferrari very specifically told the New York Times they wanted more technical freedom if they were going to consider IndyCar racing. And apparently, IndyCar did not meet those technical demands of Ferrari. And for a very graphic example of that, 2023, significant year because, of course, Ferrari is going to Le Mans. That's also the year that IndyCar introduces their hybrid platform. Now, that hybrid platform has been available at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, or will be by the time 2023 comes around, for 12 years. So IndyCar's formula versus Le Mans's formula is 12 years behind the times. And they wonder why they have such a difficult time attracting new manufacturers to the game. Uh, it's a, frankly a miracle that Honda and Chevrolet have stuck around. I think some people would call that stability. I call it stagnation. But let's talk about Ferrari and their move to Le Mans because there's a lot of things that we need to talk about. And there's a lot of things that I think a lot of new viewers are going to be coming into sports car racing and are going to be a bit confused. So I want to explain what an LMH or an Le Mans hypercar is. Because there's a lot of confusion because, especially here in the United States, a lot of people have been hearing about LMDH, otherwise known as the second iteration of Daytona prototype. Now, this Ferrari is not one of those cars. However, and this is so confusing. Good job, sports car racing. Both cars, LMDH and LMH cars, will be able to compete at the 24 hours of Le Mans, and possibly further than that. The LMH cars are cars that are com essentially completely open. You can build whatever you want. You can use whatever chassis supplier. You can use whatever engine you want. Uh, there are a spec tire. Um, you're only allowed to use Michelin tires. But outside of that, uh, everything is completely open to the manufacturer. Now, how that competition will be controlled is through a black art we call balance of performance, which is the ACO... And IMSA, barring, of course, the uh, the inclusion of hypercars over here in the United States, um, they decide that this car produces this much power, so we need to add either this much weight or this much of a restrictor plate to hopefully balance the all of the cars running in the classes and all their different powers and weights and, and construction materials and, and how uh, strong the hybrid platforms are, all these things. Try to get them as even as possible. Now, of course, as we know from categories that do have balance or performance, this doesn't always work out, and oftentimes uh, it turns out the, the manufacturer that's best at politics rather than best at building race cars is the one who is uh, winning the races. LMDH is completely different, and that is the uh, category that's going to race over here at IMSA and is not 
the category that Ferrari will be building a car for. However, Ferrari theoretically will be racing against these cars. We've already had Audi and Porsche and Acura sign up for this. LMDH cars are more tightly controlled. There will only be four chassis uh, combinations that you will be allowed to use. You won't be able to build your own stuff. You can build your own bodywork and you can bring your own engine. But again, it's going to be tightly controlled with balancer performance. And then once they all go to Le Mans or possibly Daytona or possibly all of the sports car races, both LMDH and LMH will then be balanced to each other through balance of performance. This could be very messy. And certainly, you look at where the the tides are starting to shift. There are more manufacturers currently signed up in the LMH side of things than there are in the LMDH side of things. LMH, you have Toyota, you have Glickenhaus, you have Baikalis, you have Peugeot, and now you have Ferrari. Just on the LMH side, like I said, you've got Porsche, Audi, and Acura. I think Cadillac is is a foregone conclusion that they will come in, or at least some sort of a GM product. Could be Chevrolet, we don't know. Um, but Mazda's already bowed out of that. So potentially you're looking at five versus four, with possibly more uh, manufacturers signing up on the LMH side of things. And so that's where I start to begin to question hypercar convergence or the convergence between the IMSA prototypes and the WEC prototypes. We've been hearing about this for a while. Hell, I was sitting in on the press conference in Daytona last year, uh, 2020, when this was announced. They brought all the big wigs out. There was a big uh, to do. And now suddenly we're seeing. Uh, very respectable journalists like John DeGuise, who writes for uh, his own site, Sports Car 365, saying that IMSA hasn't even made a decision whether LMH cars will be able to even race here in the United States. And I'm just scratching my head because why did the ACO, why did IMSA make a big deal that all of these cars were going to be able to race together under one roof, under one rule set, and yet here we are, we've got these huge announcements, Ferrari, Peugeot, Audi on the other side of things, Porsche. These are not insignificant manufacturers, and there's a potential that you could have these cars all racing together. Hell, Glickenhaus is an American car builder, and they may not be race, able to race in the United States. What are we doing here? You've got an incredible opportunity here in sports car racing, but unfortunately it looks like As usually is the folly with sports cars, there's going to be too many politics, and it's too complicated. That's what I'm worried about. Now, that being said, like I said, this is an opportunity. And Ferrari coming over is incredibly, incredibly important. I mentioned at the beginning, they've been almost exclusively focused on Formula One racing since 1973. The full power of the Ferrari factory behind an effort like this is significant. And I think it's not only going to be a exciting moment for the competitors, it's not just exciting for Ferrari, but the fact that the Tafolsi, the Ferrari fans, will be converging on Le Mans once again in major numbers, I'm sure. It's going to be nuts. I, honestly, I'm definitely going to try to get to Le Mans in 2023. It's going to be an amazing race, quite frankly, um, just for the fact that there's going to be all that energy, all that excitement, all of that drama. It's a lot of things that are going to be heading into Le Mans and uh, with uh, helping Le Mans' uh, excitement, their momentum. They've just got to capitalize on it. I, I talk so much about these series needing to capitalize on the things that are going well for them. And right here, prime opportunity. Um, we don't have many more details than that. Obviously, 2023, especially in current year, seems like quite a long way off. But it's nice to have things to look forward to. And certainly, I think if you're a motorsport fan, this is something that's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime thing. And I think we're all going to be looking forward to it and all very excited about it. So let me know what you think down in the comments section below about sports car racing, about uh, Ferrari making their return to the 24 hours of Le Mans and uh, true championship-level sports car racing. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to me, David Land, for more uh, motorsport content. Uh, Did have another video planned for today. I will be doing that tomorrow. Let's just say it's a Puma hat video. We'll see you then.